we're going to talk about a little bit difference in some terminology and some mathematical notation. Instead of using the words or and and, we're going to convert them to some mathematical notation. So instead of seeing the word or, you might see what's, what looks like a capital U. And instead of seeing the word and, you're going to see an upside down, what appears to be a U. So what those mean, the U, and this is how I know what the U represents, the U stands for union, because they both begin with U, and really, English equivalent, when you see that union symbol, that really means or, okay? And whenever you see the upside down U, we read that as intersection. But really, the English equivalent is the word and, okay? so. Uh, if you see a right side up U, that means or. When you see an upside down U, you can pretend to just say the word and. So going back to our Venn diagram example, we're going to fill in this Venn diagram with a little bit more detail than maybe than what you're typically used to. So if I had this bubble right here, this bubble was my jack bubble, right? And did I have any red aces that were in my jack bubble? And we didn't. So what we would say is that this bubble represents jacks and only jacks, right? So what we could state is that this is jack and upside down U. This is jack and there are no red aces over here. So red ace complement. So when we say jack, because if you just said jack, you might say, but could there be something else that this jack represents? So in this bubble, we're saying these are jacks and they are not red aces. And in this bubble over here, this is typically our red aces, but this is what we're going to say are the, is the red ace bubble and no jacks belong here. So red ace and intersect jack complement. Now, there's one other area that we need to really write something about here. And you might go, no, nope, that's all. There's only two bubbles. But really, we've got this. And this represents our sample space. Whoa, sample space. We talked about that not that long ago. Um, and so if I, if I have a jack and not a red ace, right? We said there were four of those cards. There were 450 seconds of getting that. And red aces that were not jacks, well, how many red aces were there that weren't jacks? Well, there was two red aces that weren't jacks. But remember, that's only 650 seconds. Where are the other cards at that aren't jacks and are not red aces? Well, that would represent what's uh, inside the box, but outside of our two bubbles. So all of this leftover region here, that represents the other 46 cards that are not jacks, jack complement, and upside down U, red ace complement, not red aces. And remember, there are 46 out of 52 of those cards. How'd I get 46 out of 52 so quickly? Well, I knew there were four and two here, four plus two makes six, and if I subtract six cards from 52 cards altogether using the complement rule, I get 46 out of 52. So you're going to start to practice more. Instead of just having a Venn diagram, maybe having two bubbles and just having like Jack in one bubble and Red Ace in another bubble, we're going to also say, does that include the other event or not include the other event? And in this Venn diagram, it's really kind of unnecessary, if you will, right? Because the two events, Jack and Red Ace, were already disjoint or mutually exclusive. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now our other example of jacks and spades. There was some overlap here. So what we would state for this is this is where we would see jacks and spades, right? That's where they came together. And that's where we have the one card out of the whole deck, right? The jack of spades. Now, this other region, so all together, this bubble represents jacks but it's split up into two parts, right? We got this part of our jack bubble that includes spades, but we have the other part of this jack bubble 
that does not include spades. So what that would look like with notation is J and, upside down U, J and S complement. Jacks that are not spades. And remember, how many jacks were there that weren't spades? Well, there were three of them that weren't spades. There was clubs, diamonds, and hearts. Now, for our spade bubble, really we have this great big spade bubble right here. And altogether we said there were, what, 13 out of 52 spades. But this bubble is also being split into two parts. We've got this part here, which represents a spade that is also a jack. And we also address, or we address that that's 1 52nd. But then the rest of this kind of Pac-Man looking piece here, this is going to represent all of the spades that are not jacks. So notation wise, we would call this S and J complement. Spades that are not jacks. How many spades do we have that are not jacks? Well, there's 12 out of 52 of them. And then you might go, oh, look, we're done. Not quite, because remember, we have this other space that's around all of our bubbles. All of the leftover space represents all of the not jacks and not spade cards. How many not jack and not spade cards were there altogether? Um, man, I don't know. How many were there? 36? Yeah, there was 36 out of 52. So really, if you have two events, if you have two events, you can either, depending if they're disjoint or not disjoint, if your events are not disjoint, like in this scenario, then you're going to have four possibilities of probabilities happening here. But if your events are not disjoint, then there is no overlap, and so then we go from four possibilities down to only one, two, three possibilities. All right, we're going to look at one example, and then we'll be done with the video here. So Elsa and Anna, I, those names sound familiar, I don't know. Can you take it? I, I don't know. Uh, they, they auditioned to be a part of the school play. I wonder what the school play was. I hope it was Frozen. Uh, no one auditioned for a specific spot yet, but Elsa believes she has a 0.4 chance, a 40% chance of making it, making the play. Anna believes that she has a 60% chance of making it, uh, and they believe that they both have a 30% chance of making the big show. All right, so make a Venn diagram that shows all of the events and the probabilities. So I've got this already kind of set up here. And you might go, wow, aren't you getting ahead of yourself there? Um, how do you know that there's going to be overlap here? Well, we were told they believe that they both have a 30% chance of making it. So there is this possibility that they both are in the show. So I'm going to go ahead and label that in just one second here. But where I have E, this bubble here represents Elsa making the show. And where I have this A here, that's this whole bubble, represents Anna making the show. Now, I always start, if there is an intersection, I always start there. So this represents Elsa and Anna making the show. And we were told that that is a 30% chance, 0.3 probability. Now, let's scoot over to the left. What would this region here, this kind of weird curvy Pac-Man piece, what would this really represent? And remember, this is the Elsa bubble, but this has to represent something with respect to Anna. This little piece represents Elsa making it and Anna not making the play, right? Because this part of the Elsa bubble this part of the Elsa bubble is outside of the overall Anna bubble. This is the Anna bubble where she makes the play, regardless if Elsa makes it or not. So this little sliver out here, Anna did not make it, but Elsa made it. So what is that probability? And this is where typically people will go, oh, it's a 40% chance. And I would say, hold on there, just one second. That 40% chance was the chance that Elsa makes the play. But you got to consider this bubble is that 40%. How much of the 40% have we already talked about? We've already talked about 30% of the 
right? 30% out of the 40% of the time, uh, Elsa and Anna make it. So how much of this 40% is left over for just Elsa making it, but Anna, Anna, sorry, Anna, Anna, does not make it? Well, this would be the leftover 10%. So altogether, if we took 10% and 30%, that represents that 40% chance that Elsa makes it. So now we got to do the same thing over here for Anna. So this A represents that Anna makes it and Elsa now does not make it. And again, we were told that Anna has a 60% chance of making it, right? And so we've already talked about in the Anna bubble that there's a 30% chance that Anna will make the play at the same time that Elsa also makes the play. So what's the probability, well, how much leftover percent out of this 60 does Anna have that Elsa will not make it? And so it still represents a 30% chance here, right? This 30% plus this 30% gives us that overall 60% chance. All right, now you might think we're all done, but again, remember, what about outside of these bubbles? So outside, but inside the box here, this would be that Elsa doesn't make it. <gasps> and Anna doesn't make it. Oh my gosh, how sad. But what is that probability? Because they didn't give us that, right? So here's where we get to use one of our probability rules, one of our basic rules. Remember, all of the probabilities have to add up to be 100%. And in this scenario, there's only four possibilities to happen here. And we've already talked about three of them. So we got 10% here, we got 30% here, we got 30% here. So right now, how much percentage have we accounted for for either Anna or Elsa making it? Well, that would be 70%, right? We got 60 plus 10 more, 70%. So the probability that Elsa doesn't make it and Anna doesn't make it, oh my gosh, sad day, 30%. And so 30%, 30%, 30%, and 10%, there is all 100% of the possibilities of Anna and Elsa making or not making the school play. All right, so here again are all of those situations that we just came up with, right? And so now I want you, as your you-do problem here, to answer these two probability questions based on this Venn diagram that we just completed. And that is finally all for this video. Will it ever end? I don't know. Please just stop. Hit the stop button.